All right, this is clip number six for uh, my discussion on the um, exchange rates. And in this, in this clip, what I want to do is I want to sort of remind you that in the previous clips, we talked about the supply and demand for foreign exchange, the supply and demand for yens. Okay? And um, in, in our two country world. And um, I said that those supply and demand curves were drawn just by looking at the current and capital accounts, that we ignored the central bank. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring back the central bank. So the Bank of Canada is back. And it is now going to be allowed to engage in official financing transactions. And it's because of that ability to engage in official financing transactions that uh, we can get fixed exchange rates. So this is how I'm going to differentiate between uh, floating exchange rates and fixed exchange rates. And just to recap, or recapitulate, if you want to be formal about it, the central bank has as one of its major assets foreign exchange reserves. So this would be like saying, you know, the Bank of Canada has a reserve of Japanese yen and maybe some other, I mean, in reality it probably has, you know, a ton of U.S. dollars too. Uh, but in, remember, in our world, United States doesn't exist. It's just Japan and Canada, and that's that's the world. <laughs> you know, there is no United States, but um, um, or any other country for that matter. In our hypothetical two-country world, okay. So this will also explain. Um, so so now that we so yeah, the central bank then has this um, asset of uh, foreign exchange yens. And so by buying or selling, right, in other words, by adding more to its reserve of yens or depleting its reserve of yens, this um, is basically what uh, the central bank has to do when it's engaged in these official financing transactions. Okay. I mean, ultimately, what you will see is that the central bank is basically stepping in to um, mitigate a problem created by the markets not clearing. What that basically means is, because when we do these fixed exchange rate setups, we're, we're forcing the exchange rate to deviate from what would exist under that free floating exchange rate. And this creates a distortion in the market. In other words, supply does not equal demand. Okay, because when markets clear, supply equals demand, right? The lines cross and we're all happy. Well, that's not gonna happen now. And because of that, that's why the central bank has to do this buying and selling to kind of correct this imbalance, basically. This imbalance between supply and demand. Okay, in other words, in, in one scenario, we can have an excess supply of foreign exchange. There's too many yens being supplied, so the central bank will buy them up, basically. And if we have an excess demand for foreign exchange, then we have to, uh, the central bank, from the central bank's perspective, we'd have to, uh, with excess demand for foreign exchange, we would have to uh, deplete our reserves, sell, sell off our yens. So to make this uh, point uh, explicit, now I want to show you the graph from Lipsy Regan Courant. It's at, uh, figure 37.2 in their book on page 837. All right, so basically, as you've seen in the graph, three sort of hypothetical scenarios. 
There's three possible exchange rates. So if you look on the vertical axis, you see EO. Okay, and if you go across from EO, you'll see that's where the supply and demand curve intersects. This is the exchange rate under a flexible, fl under a flexible exchange rate system. Okay, that is how it's determined. It is determined by the intersection of supply and demand. And remember, these supply and demand curves are just are based on the current and capital accounts. There, are, there's also at, in this outcome no central bank official financing transactions. Now the other two possible scenarios are E1 and E2. Okay. And you see what's happening here. With E1, if you start at EO as our baseline, we've depreciated the currency up to E1. Now look what happens. The quantity supplied a foreign exchange is much higher than the quantity demanded. Right? So in other words, there's an excess supply of foreign exchange. So what's going on here is we've got like all these Japanese people are, are just going crazy. They're, they're trying to buy up everything in Canada. They're supplying tons and tons and tons of yen. So there's a huge supply, but no one really wants yen. There's no really no demand for yens. See, the demand from the Canadians for yens is much lower because the demand curve is, is the green one. So there's this gap. This gap has to be filled by the central bank. Because there's an excess supply of foreign exchange, too many yens floating around, the central bank then has to buy these up add them to their reserves. So in this scenario, the central bank then is accumulating a big pile of yens. And in the process, it's then supplying out the, the required dollars so that the Japanese can buy what they want from the Canadians, whether it be goods or assets. The E2 scenario is, if we start from the E0, it's an appreciation from the, the, the free uh, floating exchange rate. In this situation, now instead of having E1 as the fixed exchange rate, E2 becomes the new fixed exchange rate. You'll notice that the demand for foreign exchange is much higher than the supply of foreign exchange. This basically means Canadians are running around saying, I want yens, I want yens, but there's no supply the supply is much lower. So how, how does the central bank keep the exchange rate appreciated at this level? What does it do? It has to fill this gap between the supply and demand curve. How does it do it? Well, there's excess demand for yen. Everyone's screaming, give me in Canada, give me yens, give me yens. The central bank depletes its reserves of yens. Okay? And uh, effectively selling yens and buying up uh, uh, dollars. Right. So, because remember, the reason why that's correct is because remember the demand curve says a demand for foreign exchange or supply of dollars. So there's an excess supply of dollars. So the central bank has to sort of eat them up, so to speak. And that, in essence, is what these fixed exchange rates mean. They mean a central bank is going to keep the exchange rate at some value different from equilibrium. And to do that, they have to uh, either buy or sell foreign exchange reserves. And that's it.